Hey, I'm Batman. Hey there guys, how's it going? I can't do the Batman voice the whole time. We're here to talk about the Batman movies. These first, and then we're gonna get to Nolan. And yeah, we're starting with this one. Tim Burton, 1989 Batman. And yeah, directed by Tim Burton, stars Michael Keaton, Jack Nicholson, and Kim Basinger, and Robert Wool, and Pat Hingle, and Michael Goh, and Bob the Goon. And it's the first big Batman movie. You know, we had the Adam West one in the 60s. There was basically like a two episode arc put into a movie or whatever. But this was the first big movie and it's got a legacy. You know, this has got the big legacy. One of the most important superhero movies ever. This helped Batman actually become a big mainstream thing. Even though the comic Dark Knight Returns had already been out. But like this pushed it into the mainstream. Everyone had this damn Batman shirt. Batman was huge because of this movie. So people owe a lot to it. That being said, just because it's got a legacy as an important movie doesn't necessarily mean it's actually a really good movie. I've actually went back to watch it because my opinion of it keeps dropping over the years. Like you keep seeing little things that bug me. And yeah, so it doesn't quite hold up. And I'm gonna tell you why, because you might be sitting there like, no, it's a great movie. Go back and watch it and you'll see. By the way, this mask is very uncomfortable. Really, it's actually, it's really difficult to, <laughs> Yeah, it's actually, ah, I'm worn out. I can't, I wanna, I wanna try, do the whole video in it. Ugh. It's, it, it, it compresses on my head is what it does. It compresses on my head and I can't form thoughts properly and I can't breathe out of it. So I'm like, eh, eh. it's, I love you Batman, but I can't wear the mask the whole time. I gotta put you down. And I will do something else. Anyway, yeah, we're talking about Tim Burton's Batman and yeah, I, I'm gonna try to start with all the positives I can think of because I've got more negatives to talk about. It's a mixed bag, really, if you think about it. But one of the things I really like about the movie, you know, I do have a little bit of a problem with the fact that Batman's not the main focus. It's actually kind of a half and half. Like, it's sort of about Batman, but it's more about the Joker. But the thing is, we got Jack Nicholson. Ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, he's just really fucking creepy and crazy and funny. And the thing about Jack Nicholson is he's already ready to play the Joker. Think of The Shining and all those movies he did. He's just good at being a crazy fucking nut. So he slid into the Joker role pretty easily. It feels like, yeah, so many of these scenes, you could just replace him with Mark Hamill and it still feels like the Joker. It feels perfect. This town needs an enema. And he's blowing that little party blower. Um, really, I could probably sit here all day just quoting all the really funny moments. He joy buzzes that guy to death, and then he's just sitting there talking to his charred up husk of a corpse, like, yeah, I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> like, that stuff's really creepy and funny. Because it's Jack Nicholson, he's really funny being the Joker, there's a lot, there's a lot of room for some really funny dark humor, and I love pretty much 90% of Jack in this movie is great and fantastic. I got a little problem, though, like, oh, Joker's the one that killed Bruce's parents. Like, that's, that's too convenient for the plot in a way that's just like it's like when they went in spider-man 3 and it's like it turns out sandman was also involved in uncle ben's death it's just weak and not needed also i'd like to say batman the point of the movie he looks badass the outfit's a little bit rougher on the edges the, like the mask you look at it's got some gray to it and you, there's little gaps where you, his face fits in and you can see his face a little bit a little rougher on the edges but still for just epic entrances he's dropping in the cape flowing and he slowly falls down and he rises up like a badass. So he's just like, he looks cool. He looks awesome. He looks epic. Every time he shows up, it's like, that's Batman. That's cool looking. And it's just aesthetically very pleasing. Yeah, he's a little bit of a problem with being real stiff. It's like every time he has to turn, it's his whole body because he can't turn his damn head. So that creates some problems. But he looks real cool. And Michael Keaton gave a great performance as Batman. He's not overdone. He's just like, hey, I'm Batman. He drops his voice a little bit. He's still a badass. I know it's Michael Keaton, but he comes off as a badass. And when he's Bruce Wayne, he's not quite tortured enough. Like, Bruce Wayne's a very tortured character that's got a lot of problems, but still, he's basically playing three roles as an actor. You gotta be Batman, you gotta be Bruce Wayne in public, and Bruce Wayne in private life. And, like, Michael Keaton's very good, but his Bruce Wayne's a little weak. He's a little bit... 
he's not as dynamic of a character as he should be because the focus is way more on Jack Nicholson because he's more entertaining and fun to watch because he's just dark, creepy, fucked up, and hilarious. But Michael Keaton does a good job, but he's not, and he does a good job through the suit that's not assisting him. It's so just stiff and rigid. Every fight scene too, it's like, what can I do? I can block, I guess I can punch, and I can kick up to my head once. Like, he has very little he can actually do, and it was like the filmmaking was just able to mask it enough to make it look like Batman was kicking more ass than he actually was. Like, he doesn't even really beat up that many people in the movie. It's like a dude's running, and he just uppercuts him like that, and he kicks a guy in the face. He can blow up a factory full of people with his awesome-looking Batmobile. The Batmobile looks epic, badass, the armor version. It's very cool. And People make some jokes that it looks like a long penis, but it's still, it's an inspired, interesting look, as is Gotham. That first scene, you get a look at Gotham. It's like, that's inspired, really gothic Tim Burton in a good way. But then, like, my big problem with this movie, on the surface, things look really cool, but then you actually pay attention and think about some things, and then the movie actually shows you things where it's like, oh, it's just like, eh, there's a lot of problems. So we go to Joker, and it's a different interpretation for sure, because it's the artist Joker, where he's like, I make art until somebody dies. And it's kind of fucked up some scenes in a good way, but then, like, when you get down to it, it's like, I... Do I really want to watch Batman and the Joker have a love triangle over Vicky Vale? Not really, no. It sounds like it could be kind of fun and demented, but I actually don't really want to see that. I don't. Especially with the way it's executed. I don't want that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Joker's an artist, though. It leads to some really good demented freaky shit. And, as I said, Nicholson's great. He's just, there's parts where he's just suddenly just like, Wait till they get a load of me. Ooh. Ooh. And he's just doing owl noises like he's a creepy dude and that works but then he's like dancing around to prince and defacing artists just kind of like yeah that seems like low level stuff for the joker okay like maybe i don't know maybe maybe heath ledger would have did that and it would have been really good i don't know like i don't feel like the joker needs to be doing that i feel like he should be doing real crazy joker shit like poisoning products to give people those rictus grins yeah, I love that Joker product. Like, he looks great, too. That rictus grin where he's constantly that real creepy fucking smile. I like that. That's an interesting design because they sort of do the whole Red Hood type origin where he fell in acid and that's how he became Joker. I like him more mysterious, but doing that so that he's always like white face, it's not just makeup. He looks like that and he's always got that smile. It's a cool, interesting way to do the character and I liked how they did that. But then back to the negative, you know. Gotham looks very inspired. It looks pretty cool. Interesting gothic look. And then you get any daytime shot after like the first scene where it's like, alright, here's a crowd of people. And it, by the, judging by the looks of it, there's no traffic in downtown, like central Gotham City. There's no traffic. And I don't know, like 23 people live in Gotham. Like stuff like that. It's just like, God damn it. It, it totally feels like a set. You're looking at it. It's like, you had me, and then you kept going, and then I realized it's just a set, and you didn't even bother putting people all over the set. It's just a real fake-looking set. And also, the big, the big elephant in the room, Batman, is a cold-blooded murderer in this movie. He, yeah, he blows up a factory full of dudes. He's fighting that one guy in the clock tower, and he throws him down, and the guy falls, like, I don't know, 80 feet to his death. I don't think Batman would do that, would he? No, I don't think so. Last time I checked, there's the one thing about Batman. He dresses like a bat, and also he doesn't kill anyone ever. That was his number one rule. I don't kill. That's pretty much... I know in the early, early comics he killed, but for the longest time, the one with standing rule is Batman doesn't kill, and then this Batman kills with no abandon, not like he's even struggling with it. It's just like, occasionally I'll kill someone. Who cares? Tim Burton made this movie. He doesn't give a shit about that. And Vicki Vale, Kim Basinger. I don't like her in this movie. Sorry, I don't. She looks good, but I don't like her character very much. I was kind of dull and bored by her. Like, yeah, whatever. She likes Bruce Wayne and a lot of scenes that don't matter. Like when she, fucking Alfred, a horrible butler that he is. Like, I like Michael Goh's performance, but he's a bad butler. He's like giving hints to people basically. Like, Master Bruce, come here, sir. Secret stuff. Like, he's just, he's, <laughs> he's not very secretive about stuff. And he left her in the Batcave at one point. And then she's like, Bruce, can we still try to love each other or whatever? It's like, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? There's some scenes where you watch him and they're mostly Vicky Vale stuff like, this wasn't needed, could have cut it out of the movie, 
Probably would have been much better. And she really, half, every time she's in a scene with Batman or Joker, it's just screaming and screaming and screaming. She never stops screaming. And it got on my damn nerves. I don't like her in this. I don't like Biggie Vale. She could have got killed. I would have been fine with it. And I already shit on Alfred for, yeah, he was a good actor. Michael Goh did a good job. He feels like a good comic booky Alfred, old butler, master Bruce. But, and he's got some funny, uh, like, subtle humor in the movie, but he's a bad butler. And speaking of bad characters, we got oh, Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon, who should be a great character. We've seen the Dark Knight movies where you can do him right, the Arkham games. Jim Gordon is like Batman's sidekick almost. He's the one guy in the police force of this corrupt city that's good and honest, a decent man, a great cop, a badass detective. He can kick your ass. He's got a mustache. There's a lot of things that make Gordon awesome. And then this guy... What the fuck? He's like Chief Wiggum from The Simpsons. He's just a bumbling idiot. He's a giant, fat, bumbling idiot. And I just, I hated him. He was useless. They took a really good character and did nothing with him. They just crumpled, oh, this is, all right, here's a paper on why Gordon is awesome. Okay, and they crumpled up and threw it away. Like, he's gonna be Ralph Wiggum. We don't give a shit. So they wasted that character. Another character they wasted, Harvey Dent, just kind of shows up to say nothing really. It's Billy D. Williams, man. It's Billy D. Williams. You know, Lando Calrissian gonna be Two-Face eventually is what you're thinking and then he's just like the festival that doesn't matter or have anything to do with this will go on is that why I'm here just to talk shit about the festival once or twice and disappear wow what a waste you really belong with us in the clouds like and they waste him as an actor as a character and yeah that shit like the festival like a lot of bullshit in this movie where really if you pay attention there's little aspects here and there. It's like, cut this shit out. Like, Robert Wool, he's got a good line. Like, is the Batman the police payroll? And if so, what's he bringing in after taxes? Like, he's got a good joke. But uh, every other scene with him and Vicky Vale is just kind of like, I didn't need it. It wasn't important. Cut that shit. This is a Batman movie. We barely focus on Batman half the time. He's not nearly as interesting as the Joker. And, uh. And then there's just little things where you have to rewatch the movie to realize, like, it's kind of campy. If you pay attention and watch the movie, it's got some good dark humor, but it's kind of campy like the 60s show, just in a darker setting with a different looking Batman. Like, Adam West would never kill, but this guy will kill, and he's wearing a black suit as opposed to the spandex thing. But they're making similar type jokes almost, and like Batman's got a plane that'll steal balloons because it's got special scissors to catch him. That's like an Adam West type tool. And... <laughs> Ah, oh, the fucking plane. Joker takes it down with one shot, but before he does, Batman's got him dead in his sights, right in the center. Like, I'm gonna shoot your ass, because I don't give a shit. And he can't hit him. Dead in his sights, missiles, rockets, nothing can hit the Joker, and one shot takes down the Bat plane. Clearly, he did not invest his budget into the plane like he did with the Batmobile. <sighs> it's little things like that that really piss me off. And the let's get nuts scene where Michael Keaton's like, listen, you wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts. That's not Bruce Wayne. That's so far from what Bruce Wayne should be like let's get nuts that's the opposite of what Bruce Wayne should be all the murder is the opposite of what Batman should be there's there's so little attention to detail on what makes Batman Batman like he shows up and he's epic and he drifts in with the cape and he looks like a badass okay and that's all they got and the Joker's really awesome Joker's awesome and Batman looks cool not much else though the music Danny Elfman's music great fantastic one of the most classical like film scores ever there's good things in here, but there's a lot of bad. Batman looks cool. Joker's really funny, like 90% of the time. And the music's great. Aesthetically, half the time it looks good. But then, like, it's a, Gotham City has all of 20 residents in it. There's a love triangle in the movie that really doesn't need to be there. Vicky Vale never shuts the hell up with her screaming. Batman kills people. He's a little too stiff. There's some good dark humor, and it's basically all around the Joker. Anything with Joker pretty much is great, and that's why I can still sit down and watch this movie occasionally, because Batman looks cool, and there's parts where it's just like, fuck yeah, that's Batman. That's awesome. That's epic. And then Joker is just really entertaining to watch. And the movie might bug me with Batman stuff, but if Joker shows up, I start paying attention a lot and get really excited because he's fun. He's so fun in this movie. Jack Nicholson is great as the Joker. And then, like, everything else just diminished. Like, Batman's, well, it's not the Joker, but he looks cool. And it's like Vicky Vale and everyone else is like... Bleh, bleh, bleh. Hey, I'm Batman. Anyway, yeah, I had to finish the video like this. You know, it, it was actually bothering me because it's like I I was wearing the hat the whole time. I'm like, let's do a little dramatic light, little Michael Keaton Batman lighting, put on the mask, finish this video outright because, you know, through the whole video I've been saying, <laughs> I've been making it sound maybe a little bit worse than it is. 
But you know, the movie's not perfect, but it's got problems for sure. But I, uh, yeah. And also, I just want to do that. I want to do the pop up. I want to pop up as Batman with the lighting in the mask. I, for the rest of the videos, I'm gonna make it work somehow. I'll sneak. I'll take a little oxygen break, just like, because <sighs> I can't breathe out of my nose, and otherwise my mouth the whole time's just like, <sighs> and I can't do that. But I'll make it work for every other video. I'll be wearing this the whole time through. Dramatic lighting. I don't know. Maybe shut this off. Well, that's too dramatic. Ah. But then, uh, like, have some blue dim lights, and I don't know. I'll I'll try to figure it out. Yeah. But anyway, not perfect. Got a lot of problems, but still, overall, a watchable, entertaining movie. It's just got a lot of problems, as I discussed, but it's still a decent Batman movie. I like the Batman. He's cool. Not perfect, but he's watchable. And Joker's awesome. So the, I I give the movie a C minus. I just can't give it a positive rating, but too, like I couldn't give it like a D. That felt like that'd be too harsh, too negative on the movie. I don't know. Even though I could sit there and pick apart little things for days that nitpick I hate. They kill the Joker, putting an end to that arc before it even starts. All the useless characters, Gordon's completely useless, Batman's a murderer. But still, Batman looks cool, and I like the Joker as he's in here. You wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? And, like, Batman shows up, excuse me. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight and punches him in the fucking teeth? Like, stuff like that. Little things are just like, that's awesome. So anyway, uh, comment below. Tell me you thought of Batman. I know a lot of you probably really enjoy it and want to defend it. I know some of you probably dislike it even more than me. And like, no, Dylan, you should have fucking put your dick in his mouth and slapped it like a whore. Because it's just a bad movie. <sighs> I don't think anyone would say that. But yeah. And, uh... So yeah, comment below, tell me you thought of Batman. I look forward to reviewing all the other ones with you guys with this on the whole time. Have the ears out, it'll be a fun time. And yeah, thanks you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Batman Vanish. I'm Batman. That's too close.